Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and tonight we're looking at the impossibly possible possibility possibilized by impossible toys, the Alicon. I've wanted a transforming toy of this goody chomping species from the 86 Transformers movie ever since I was a toddler, and I had no idea this release was happening until I saw it for sale at TFCon 2012. This release was part of the breaking of a long silence from Impossible Toys, and is also one of the first full figures to be designed by Venksta of render form. Let's see how it turned out. This guy looks a lot like the character model seen in the 86 Transformers film. A few liberties are taken for the sake of transformation, but it's pretty obvious who this is supposed to be. He's primarily molded in the proper colors, with paint being used mostly for turquoise, pink, and red detailing. The paint's alright, but there are spots of slop here and there on mine. His plastic also has a very specific quality to it, the mixture of density, hollowness, and shininess that I can only explain as good old-fashioned 80s plastic. This feels incredibly intentional, especially given the fact that this looks more like a late 80s Transformer in sculpt than a modern one. A very cool choice to make, and one that means this guy would probably look at home alongside that old Ganaw Sharktacon toy. It does also mean he looks a tad strange standing with newer Transformers brand figures, but I don't really mind myself. The Alicon is armed with a double-headed spear that's formed from three separate pieces. It needs to disassemble in order to fit into his hand, but otherwise is nicely large and dangerously pointy. Be careful when you pull it apart, though. The centerpiece's pegs are slightly fatter than they need to be and could stretch the holes on the pointy pieces. Do a careful test fit and see if you need to sand anything down. Sanding things might not be your only problem, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's look at how this guy moves, which is another thing that surprised me and made me want to pick him up. He's got basic shoulder articulation and elbow articulation and bicep swivelage. He's really only missing a wrist joint here. His elbow doesn't work perfectly. You can see there's like a limited range to how much it can bend and it can kind of just bend in both directions. But it does have this cool aesthetic of like just looking kind of organic in a technological way. What? when you bend it left or right, or up and down, or in and out, however you want to refer to that. Um, this little waist piece here, by the way, it is supposed to be flipped out, I'm pretty sure. The thing is, it's all friction, and it's not very tight friction on mine, so you might even notice in the footage for this video, there are often times where it just kind of has folded itself back in due to gravity and pendulum science. Uh, his hips can be a little bit tight. I've heard some people had to kind of loosen or tighten some screws on this guy to get some of the joints to work more properly, but he does have uh, a small range of outward motion, full in and out motion, and his knees are, due to the transformation, sort of multi-jointed. You can extend this part out and then bend it a little bit farther than you might get out of just the normal knee hinge. The thing is that these, this heel spike might hit something on the way down. The one bummer is, again, for the transformation, his foot can actually bend like this, and I really wish it could bend like this, but forwards as well, maybe even side to side. It feels like if this foot could pull out and have some more motion, that would have really helped this guy out. On the bright side, the foot can also turn, so you can kind of uh, have some assistance in walking poses with uh, this dude's joint setup. The reversible knee joint actually helps out here because it means that while it's not necessarily pretty to look at, you can have, with one leg bent like this, a somewhat solid stance. And this guy really needs to have his feet flat to the ground because he has a tendency to tip over uh, backwards if you don't do that. Uh, there is something that is in place to try to help with this, which is his multi-jointed, and I mean like super multi-jointed tail which joints all the way up to here. A lot of these joints have kind of a click-in point as well, so you can click them back down and sort of soft lock them into place. The problem is, they don't all lock into place super happy, and as you can see here, I've got some mega stress on there that uh, was there when I got it. And it means that the plastic, I think, was a bit warped when it was assembled in the factory, so that particular joint doesn't hold together quite as solidly, but it can really help him out as sort of a uh, third leg and that can prevent him from falling down in some postures. His head is on a ball joint sort of setup. It's kind of a series of swivel joints uh, with... It's hard to see inside there, but there is actually a, a, a little collar in there that prevents his head from turning too far in either direction. That's actually a good thing, because if you turned it any farther, the blue paint on his helmet would scrape, and uh, you can see here I've already got a little bit of scrapage on the blue paint there uh, out of the box. And it means he can also look up and down a bit due to the transformation. He can also look up and down a hell of a lot. He can also totally turtle up and just hide. But something you might notice is that the alignment of the panel that his head is on is a little bit off kilter on mine. I didn't notice this until I got home from TFCon, but I'm going to zoom in here. You see that white 
mulched up plastic back there. That is where the uh, pin that runs through this section got pushed through in a way that I think was not necessarily how it was supposed to be pushed through. And it looks like the, I guess the bracket for that pin has ripped open. Uh, it's still quite solid. It doesn't feel like it's actually going to fall apart anytime soon, but it is kind of, it's kind of crooked. And you only really notice that if you lift his head up far enough to notice that this inner platform is not symmetrical or perpendicular. Uh, and by that I mean this inner platform. So it's not something that's crippling, but it is a bummer that uh, such an assembly quirk could have happened. Uh, hopefully that is not common at all. Um, but this is actually my second Alicon, because at the convention, again for the transformation, he's got this double jointed uh, hinge here. There's a joint inside and a joint there. And on mine, the joint that's connected directly to this piece had a rivet that was put in place uh, a little bit heavily, and then it was assembled a little bit out of place, and basically, you couldn't fully transform the head. It was jammed, and I, uh, I got in there with tools, I got in there with the screwdrivers, uh, borrowed some, uh, some help from some folks at the con, and we just could not figure it out. Thankfully, uh, my bro backstop was able to take a look at it and just kind of give me a replacement. Let me look at a couple of these guys. We did fix the busted one, but uh, he said, here's a couple of them. Just pick one that looks like it's all right. And uh, unfortunately, I picked one with a little bit of mulch in there. But I'm trying to say these guys are pretty solid, but their production process might have a few problems. Hopefully, as I said, these are rare occurrences, but I wanted to point out all the ones I'd seen uh, just so you're aware of the risks and if you do have a problem, I'm very sure the site you buy this from will be able to help you out. I'm sure Impossible Toys has some kind of setup to look into these sort of problems, so don't worry too much if you get a bum one, just contact the shop you bought it from. Uh, if you need to, maybe like poke them with this, because this thing really hurts, and uh, you're golden. Anyway, let's talk about transformation. This is a fun and logical transformation. Its primary weakness is that you need to remove the two frontal shoulder spikes from the robot mode, but they do have somewhere to go. Otherwise, it's not only sensible, but like it's plastic, it feels very intentionally retro. There are several tabs for stability in the backpack, but the robot arms end up a bit floaty in my opinion. There are also no instructions, at least in my copy of the toy, so if you get stuck anywhere, you may need to ask around for some help. Or go watch a video review, like you're doing right now. You know, you kind of solved this problem before I even brought it up. Once again, this mode gets really close to the on-screen model and leaves me quite satisfied. The jaws are big, chunky points, and the hunchback rolls into a large, robo-reptilian tail. Like the robot mode, the paint apps are mostly for detail and look fine, though not incredibly crisp. The staff weapon pieces and removed shoulder spikes become a pair of pointy clubbing sticks, while the central staff piece pulls a cool trick and stores inside the gator jaws to form a sort of... tongue? While I wish there was a place on the body of the Alicon to put the longer pieces, such as inside the hunchback, they at least can be held by the Alicon's pointy pink fingers. What is a problem is that the aforementioned fit of the staff weapon can stretch the holes to a degree such that they do not match up well to the shoulder spikes. This can probably be fixed with a bit of floor polish if you're up for that sort of thing. Bunch of floor polish lifestylers. Rocking that floor polish lifestyle. Rubbing it on your chest and stuff. In alligator mode, this guy is still pretty poseable, uh, mostly because of these new little arms. These are actually more poseable than his robot mode arms. They're skinnier, and they've got this hollowness uh, in one side, but uh, they have full movement, and in fact even have a wrist joint. The bicep swivel, the elbow, the shoulder, uh, it's all very well done. The legs um, are, you can see by the groove here, they're kind of meant to just stay there, even though they don't lock in, but you can mess around with them and have them posed however you want if you want this guy to look like he's running or, or hopping or, or kicking. This is silly. Um, the forward ankle joint is very useful in this mode as you can tell. It allows this guy to have uh, a much more hunched or bestial stance, although you can give him kind of like a forward running stance by straightening them out or you can lean him back and uh, have him rest on his tail, which is still uh, quite helpful for balancing, and in this mode it's it's way cooler as like a big curved kind of uh, whipping deal so he can smack dudes with it. Um, his mouth is a nice, big, healthy, chomping single joint. You can sort of see the robot head in there sometimes, but he's got to push it up and out of the way. Um, he unfortunately can't really look around very much, 
Uh, I don't see how they could have really easily done it. It would have been nice if this dude's alligator head could look left and right, but that's kind of asking for a lot out of this design. Uh, and the bright side is this mouth is so big and wide open, you can take a little dude like a Halo Mega Box man and just chew him up in there. It's, uh, it's pretty satisfying. Uh, you'll want to be careful about the teeth, though. They're pointy. So, number one, you want to be careful because they could cut you. And number two, you want to be careful because if you do something stupid like cram a Mega Bloks dude in there and cram the jaws shut like I just did, you might actually bend or break some of the teeth uh, feasibly if you put enough force into it. They seem pretty durable, though. I haven't seen any stress marks on mine. So this is more of a don't be an idiot kind of warning. I guess, you know, don't be an idiot and do what I just did. Uh, <clears throat> so, the Alicon. I went in very biased in my delight of this design receiving a transforming toy, especially one that didn't feel like it'd fall apart in my hands upon first impressions. Impossible Toys clearly put more blood and sweat into this figure than their previous transforming toy, the Valkyrie slash Medic slash TFCon Nightbird, and there is a marked improvement in quality. Unfortunately, there are still shortcomings, but I hope this is a continued growth that leads to an even more solid release when they put out their upcoming Tetrajet figure. As I mentioned earlier, there are still some potential assembly problems happening at the factory, and the whole situation of uniform diameters and stretching peg holes in the staff weapon and shoulder spikes was disappointing to see. I really want Impossible Toys to keep pushing, because if they can iron out just a few more bugs in their production process, they could become a much stronger independent company. As it is, the buyer's got to be aware of some potential assembly issues when picking up this figure. However, some people have picked these guys up and had no problems whatsoever. I just had my weird, janked-up joint, Gerotimus had to tighten some screws. You might end up with one that's fine, by all accounts. And should you pick it up? If you're as into the Alicon design from the classic movie as I am, I would recommend at least handling one of these figures. The price is steep at around 80 bucks, but the toy is pretty beefy to compensate. I do wish these could have somehow been sold somewhere closer to $50, just because the temptation to purchase two or three is enormous. Seeing them en masse at TFCon was very cool, and I wish I could have afforded at least one more. Oh, also, hardcore G1 collectors may want to consider this, if only because it looks like it'd be very at home on a Season 3 or movie G1 toy shelf. But if you don't want to deal with possibly having to do a couple minor modifications or dealing with some QC speed bumps, the $80 price tag might be hard to swallow. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I'm famished. I think I'm going to go to my secret cupboard and swallow a few of my own special Energon goodies. Ba-weep, grano-weep, ninny-bong, and good night, my friends.